Kreutzer Violin Etude No. 31 Step-by-Step -step Tutorial, Part 2, Accident-Proof Intonation. And now about the accidentals. Yes, this etude is full of accidentals, which can make it, first of all, very hard to just read through it for the first couple of times. And second, tuning can be a big issue. However, if you have seen our first segment of this tutorial, you will know that the most important part of every of those confusing passages is that structure, skeleton structure, right? The blueprint that Kreutzer is using to build all of those phrases on. So if you haven't seen it, make sure to watch the, the first part of this tutorial. If you have seen it, then you know what I'm referring to. And when it comes to figuring out all those accidentals, it's so easy if you just first concentrate on the second notes of every slur, as we talked about the, the, in the previous uh, part of the tutorial, and then you will build your accidentals off of those notes. So let's go back to the beginning. Uh, let's see. So we have um, the skeleton phrase would be In that case, first of all, in order to really have a very accurate intonation off the bat, there is this very, very old way that we've used, my generation used it because we didn't have all those electronics, we didn't have all those convenient tuners online or on your phone. And so our drones, our tuners were just our open strings. Yeah. These are your best friends when it comes to intonation and very convenient too, because they're always with you when you practice, right? So that um, reminds me, make sure if you are using this tutorial, if you are playing along with it, or with any of my tutorials, make sure and tune your violin to 440, A, your A to 440, and carefully tune all of your strings. If you have trouble tuning, I always put uh, a link in the description, and it, it is there now. You can click on it. It'll take you to my tuning video, violin tuning video, where you can just tune all of the strings very carefully. Number one, that is the most important thing you can do when you're working, when you're practicing on the violin, and especially when you're working in intonation. So today I'm going to show you how I use my open strings to help me always be aware of whether I'm in tune or not and tune accordingly. So in this first skeleton phrase we have, we're going to find, first of all, I want to find the notes that correspond to any of my open strings. And it's very easy because you have G's, right? So you have a G here, and this one. So this is what I'm gonna do first. The G is the, the note that I'll tune first. So I'll make sure that this G and this G, whenever I get, whenever, whenever it's turned to play those, they are always in tune with my open strings. So once I tune that G, then the F sharp, as you can see, is only half a step under it. Now here, it's kind of a personal thing how close you want that F sharp. It could be very close, or it could be a little bit less, a little bit further. That is fine. This is not a problem. As long as you're within the F sharp zone and you're not leaking into G or F natural zone, you're fine within that zone, right? However, once you chose your F sharp, You want to make sure that that other F sharp is also exactly the same distance away down from your G, from your next G. Does it make sense? And this is a part of intonation work that a lot of actually violinists miss. And that includes myself. For a long time, I didn't really um, think of it in a way that playing in tune is not just about absolute tuning where when I just play my first note, remember? I want to make sure I hit that in tune and I basically only have it to compare to what I hear that is supposed to be in tune, right? But once I played those two notes, next time I play them, it's important that then I also match those two notes 
to the previous two F sharp G that I already played. And so that is the second component of your intonation work that is very important. And that's what will create that feeling of a really bright, resonant, and really clear sense of intonation, really clean, that very beautiful sense of, oh my goodness, this person is just playing with such a beautiful, clean, resonant intonation. I feel like a lot of times that is the step that is missed, right? Because as I told to my students, intonation, each note, each pitch is not really a laser beam. It's more of a zone that you can kind of play with it a little bit. So you can make your F sharps a little bit closer to a G or a little or more in the middle of that zone. That is okay when you're playing just for the first time. Now, some notes don't really have a zone. For example, once you tune your four strings, if you play a G, you have to be laser, be laser beam perfectly matching this open string G. You don't have a leeway, right? So that's why I was saying how important it is to tune your strings very well and then always hit those uh, G, D, A, and E's, no matter what octave and what string you're on, make sure that they always correspond to those G's. Those notes, you have no luxury of tweaking or moving up or down. They have to be dead in the middle of that zone for each note. However, the notes, other notes, such as especially flats and sharps, can always be tweaked just a little bit. So it also can be a personal issue. You can, each of us hears a little bit differently and that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. The only thing you have to remember, once you chose how close that F sharp is to your G, because the next one comes so quickly, especially in the faster works, faster ages like this. I will still remember probably the effect of your F sharp and G that had on my ears. So once you get to the next F sharp and G, if it's not exactly precisely copying what you just played before, I will have this feeling, hmm, even if you both the notes, both notes hits within their zone, I will still have this weird feeling, something is up with this intonation, with this person's intonation. So how do we accident proof it? Number one, you go with the skeleton, skeleton structure of every motive, every one of those motives that has a lot of accidentals. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, refer to the part one of this uh, tutorial. Number two, you tune them according to the skeleton note going in or half a step under or sometimes it's half above in some places. That's fine. So once you tune them, remember, if you are going to repeat them going down or going up in the different octave, you have to make sure that you match your own intonation. If you do that, you will be golden. Your intonation will improve, first of all. It will improve significantly because you will start listening to your, to your own intonation much more intently. Therefore, you will be noticing much better whether you're playing in tune or not. Very important, always keep track of your open strings. Every time you hit G, D, A, or E on any string in any position, you have to perfectly match it to your open string. If you acquire that habit, oh my goodness, you will not believe how quickly you will be aware of whether you're in tune or not. Because let me tell you, when you play any of those notes, anywhere on the violin, when you hit it perfectly in tune with the open string, there's a very special extra resonance that your instrument gives out. And maybe at first you won't notice it, but after paying attention and always matching those notes to your open strings, your ear will start catching that extra resonance. And before you know, you won't even have to play the open string. Your ear will detect if that resonant is, resonance is present, that extra brightness is present in those notes, you will know right away you're in tune. If it doesn't, right away your ear will kind of give you that nudge and you will know something is wrong. You will start correcting that note. So this is amazing. It's really, really great. And that's why it's so important to use your ears when you're tuning yourself and not just there are devices that you can just look at and it'll tell you whether you tune or not. And those can be sometimes convenient, but the best thing you can do for yourself, if, if you're using any kind of electronics, use the drones where you can hear the note and you have to tune to 
the note that you hear, right? Or your open strings, because that is what really develops your intonation, your hearing. And then in the end, when you're on stage, you can't really whip up a device and see whether you're flat or sharp. You've got to use your ears to tune, right? So this is the way to proof, accident proof your intonation, both in accidentals and just when it comes to plain white notes. You will be so confident, you cannot believe how good it will be. And so for this week's um, assignment, I would say just again, go with the structure of every um, motive of those jagged motives that have a lot of uh, accidentals and figure out how do you like to hear those F sharps or E flats and then make sure that you are hearing them exactly the same. Once you played those, make sure that you're matching those in every one of those passages that once you play them in one octave, if it goes down to an octave or up, that they're exactly the same. Now, the best way to actually do it is also to record yourself. You could do just a voice message or you could do a video of yourself and then listen back, take the music, look at the music and circle whatever notes you feel are not quite in tune. And once you circle those, figure out, is it sharp, does it need to be higher or flatter? And then I usually put a little arrow going up or down according to how I need to fix that note. And then next time I just do that. I just practice hitting it a little bit higher and see the effect that it has on me. You'll be amazed. The more you hear yourself and you mark the notes that are out of tune, the more you realize you, you basically play the same things out of tune the same way. It took me forever to realize that, but that's why I'm telling you this. So you don't have to take forever to figure that out and you'll be golden. So keep going and please post in comments. I want to see how you're progressing and if you have any more questions about this. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week for the new tutorial. Until then, make sure and practice.